Hello, I'm Michael Masters, a Michigan-based graphic designer, and I'm gonna show you how to make a very simple mood board in Photoshop in just five steps. The process I'm gonna show you goes hand in hand with this template that you can download and use to build your own custom mood board. After you watch the video, go ahead and get your free template at the link in the description below. Okay, let's dive in with step number one, create a project folder. Okay, you might be wondering, how is a project folder going to help me create a mood board? Well, consider that a mood board is made up of an arrangement of all different design elements like photos, graphics, typography, colors, and textures. In the next step, we're going to be collecting and analyzing all of these design elements. So it just makes sense to have a specific place on our computer to store them. Here's how we do it. Let's suppose that our project is to create a logo for a small town electrician. We're gonna create a new folder and give it the name of our project, Spark Electric Company Logo. Then create another folder within that project folder and give it the name Inspiration. Okay, moving on to step number two, gather inspiration. This is where we begin to hunt for all those fantastic design elements I just mentioned. We're looking for reference images online that encompass the aesthetic and style of logo we're hoping to achieve. There are countless websites to find these images. Google Images, Pinterest, Dribbble, Behance. As we find images that inspire us, we'll save them in the inspiration folder we created in step one. After we're satisfied with our search, it's on to step number three, place images. Now that we have all our reference images in one place, we're gonna open up that mood board template in Photoshop. We wanna put our favorite and most relevant images here on this blank canvas. We do that by going to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and then this dialog box pops up. We'll change this setting to Folder and click Browse. Locate that Inspiration folder and click OK. Now here are all those images we saved in the last step. We'll click OK. Photoshop will now open up a new file and create layers for every one of those images. We'll come down to the Layers panel, select the first layer, then scroll down to the end and shift click on the last layer, which selects them all. Then we'll click and drag them over here onto this tab, still holding the mouse button. The other file opens and we'll drop the files over here on the blank canvas. Next thing to do is to range the images so they are all visible on the canvas. Now, since we got these online, it's likely that we'll have a mix between large, small, tall, wide, good, and bad quality images. The challenge we have now is to choose which images we'll use and get them into these shapes within our template. We'll start with this image by dragging it on top of the first rectangle. Then we want to send the image behind the rectangle. We can do that by coming up to Layer, Arrange, Send to Back but I prefer to use the shortcut key shift control left bracket. If you're on a Mac, that's shift command left bracket. Now I'll use the move tool to scale the image and put it in position. Click this check mark when I'm satisfied. Now I need to crop this image within the rectangle using a layer mask. Here's how to do that. I'll come down to the layers panel and find the layer titled rectangle one. A quick way to select this shape is to hold control or command on a Mac and click this icon. Now that we have that selection, I'll click somewhere on the image to activate its layer, and we'll click this button down here to apply the layer mask. I'll do that one more time, but a little bit quicker. Drag this next image on top of the second rectangle, scale it up to a decent size, click the check mark to accept it, send it behind the rectangle with the shortcut Shift Control Left Bracket, or Shift Command Left Bracket if you're on a Mac, click on Rectangle 2. I'll come down to the Layers panel and Control click the icon to make the selection. Click on the image to activate its layer and click this button to apply the layer mask. Now I'll repeat those steps for the rest of the images. For the typeface section, you can enter text in one of two ways. If you have saved images, you could delete this text and use the rectangle to make a layer mask like I just showed you. Or maybe you found a font that complements your design. In that case, just edit this text directly with the type tool. For the color section, there's a couple ways to do this as well. If you wanna sample some colors from your images, here's how you can do that. Click on one of the color swatches using the move tool, 
Use the keyboard shortcut I to activate the eyedropper tool and click the area of the image for your color sample. Then click Alt and Delete to fill the shape. Repeat that process for all of your colors. Another option is to use Adobe Color if you want to create your own color palettes or browse through their huge collection of palettes. Once you're happy with your palette, you can easily save it to your Adobe library and it becomes immediately available in Photoshop. Then it's just a matter of clicking these swatches and selecting the color from your library. Okay, step number four, extract the value. All right, now that you have all of your design elements in position, we're gonna do something that you really don't see on traditional mood boards. We're gonna use this text underneath our pictures to briefly explain why we chose each graphic or image. Consider writing about things like the amount of detail, the boldness of colors and lines, the layout and alignment of the elements, or the proximity of elements in relation to each other. You don't need to write a novel, just list the parts that stood out to you the most. On to step number five, print and display. The last step is the most simple, and it only has two parts. Print it and display it. The artboard within Photoshop is set to print out easily on letter size paper. I personally like to put my mood board on the wall above my monitor so it's always within view to give your project a sense of style and direction. And that, my friends, is the five steps on how to make a mood board in Adobe Photoshop. The goal of my channel is to help you survive and thrive in your journey as an independent artist. I'd love to have you join my tribe. All you have to do is click subscribe and ding the notification bell. If you like this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.